Hey there folks, Peter here from BlackRock Business. I am so excited to see you here at the channel. This is our channel on QuickBooks Point of Sale. All things QuickBooks Point of Sale that you need to learn are gonna be in this channel, so you better look out, you better stay tuned. <laughs> Today we are going to be talking about uh, taking a payment method called account. So I don't know if you've seen it, uh, you may or you may not, on the make a sale screen have a button that says account and it's right down at the bottom here and today we're going to explain what that is and how it works and before we do that I'm going to have you check out the description down below we got a link to get over to our QuickBooks point of sale Facebook group which is an excellent community where you can ask questions about things you are wondering about or errors or workflows or maybe you request a video for this channel People such as myself and other retail owners using QuickBooks Point of Sale will have a great dialogue answering your questions. We, we are growing and growing in that community and it's, it's doing really awesome and people are pretty excited to get their answers. Uh, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can get all the latest, greatest QuickBooks Point of Sale videos coming at you all the time. Okay, let's get down to business. BlackRock business, right? All right. We got the account button here and what that is is it's kind of like I like to think of it as a tab kind of like your bar tab you know or um, some people would call it a house account we have a more extensive video on this subject where it goes through all the way to QuickBooks accounting and tells you what's going on there but this is the quick dirty easy version of charging to a house account you have to have a customer assigned in order to charge to a house account. Uh, so let's say that Al Smith came in and Al Smith was somebody you know, so you trust them. So you're going to allow them to buy a charm necklace and pay it off in the future because they're going to charge it to their house account. And so uh, this charm necklace is $29.99. Looks like we got some tax, 32, whatever. Uh, if you do, if you don't have a name on the receipt, then you cannot charge to account because then it cannot track the balance of the account. That's right. What you're doing here is you're allowing your customer to have credit, you know, credit in your store, kind of like when you have a Kohl's card or a Target card. Those stores are allowing their customers to have credit. And so you don't really need a card in this case. You just need to charge it to account instead of taking cash, credit, or check. So we hit account and we come up with some options. You're going to leave this all alone because what you're doing here is charging this necklace to account. This is the charge amount. It already knows it. Currently, Al Smith has $0 uh, charged on account, which means he doesn't owe you anything. After this transaction though he's gonna owe you thirty two dollars and thirteen cents so we hit save and if this is the first time the customer has charged to account it's going to ask you to set this option for using with QuickBooks and of course you just want to go ahead and hit yes because this is gonna enable the house account now the next screen here is asking you uh, what their credit limit should be. So how much do you want Al Smith to be able to charge at one point in time? You know, and it's all it's all up to you. Do you want him to have a $5,000 credit limit or a $500 credit limit? Let's set him for 500. So we're going to use charge account for this customer. You can change their credit limit in the future by bringing up their customer profile and changing it. So available credit is 500. Current account balance is zero. We are charging 32.13 to account. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. You'd probably hit save and print because your receipt on an account charge is gonna have a place for a signature so you can grab their signature so you have that uh, evidence that they actually said, yes, I'm going to pay this in the future. Actually, I'm gonna show that to you real quick. I'm gonna hit save and print and I'm just gonna show you the preview. So, Right here, it says, I agree to pay the above amount according to the agreement. And so they're going to, you can change the wording on this. So it says something about the charge account. 
So previous balance, previous balance was zero. Now the account balance is 32. They're gonna sign this and you can see their name right up here. And that's how you have proof that they said that they would do that. They would go ahead and pay you back. So you could probably use that, you know, in a court of law or whatever you need to do. Now I'm gonna go on my customers list just to show you how this pans out. I'm gonna look up Al, wherever he went, Al Smith, here he is. And now over here in the details area, which can be found by hitting the details button, I can see that uh, Al has an account balance of 32.13 and he has available credit of 467.87 left. That's how much credit he has left. So this just tells me how much Al owes me. You can also do some more extensive reporting on account charges to see all of the outstanding balances and it can also be seen in QuickBooks Accounting if you have QuickBooks Accounting hooked up to your QuickBooks point of sale, which I highly recommend that you do. So there you have it. That's the quick run through on charging to account on the receipt screen. My name's Peter with BlackRock Business. If this was helpful for you, go ahead and hit the like button because I love my likes. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below or get over to our Facebook group. You have yourself an excellent day. Bye-bye.